Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning with Washington University. This is Module 3, TensorFlow and Kira's Introduction, Part 3, Loading and Saving Neural Networks. I'm going to show you a variety of ways that you can load and save trained neural networks. Once you've trained your neural network, you probably want to keep it, especially if it takes a while to train. Some of the later modules in this class, we will train neural networks that might take four minutes, five minutes, up to an hour to train. So once you have put all that effort into the neural network, you want to train it. Also, when, you cre when I create neural networks that we're going to use with clients and other um, entities to connect into, usually I will save the model in a binary state so that I have it fully trained, ready to go. I put the model onto one of our servers. We accept input from our web service run the model, produce the output, and send, uh, send data back to the client. To do this, you need to load and save the trained neural network. There are a variety of formats that Keras allows you to save them in. YAML uh, is yet another markup language. This format, you can see it on Wikipedia, looks basically like this. The neural network would be much longer and have um, more information in it. JSON is another very common format of getting data back and forth. JSON looks something like this. Wikipedia needs money. Um, so you, you can basically encode your neural network into something like this in JSON. Now, if you store it in JSON or YAML, it's just storing the structure of your neural network, what the layers look like, how many neurons on each. It's not storing the weights. So this is only useful for a way to persist the, the size uh, and type of neural network that you have. This is really meant more for third-party software to help you architect a neural network and then load it in for later training. The format that I prefer and usually use, we, pro we won't really use YAML and JSON further in this class. I'll show you what the output looks like. But HDFS, HDF5, I keep wanting to call it HDFS thanks to, um, thanks to Hadoop, but it's nothing to do with um, HDFS. They are quite different, even though the 5 sometimes looks a little bit like an S. The HD5 format is um, even has the logo there. It's implemented in a variety of programming languages, and it's a great way to exchange binary data. So you have all those weights. You would rather store them as 32 or 64-bit floating point numbers rather than all printed out with negative 3.52, whatever, whatever the number happens, happens to be. So this code that I have here, we basically train a neural network and we're going to output it to all these different ways. We're taking the auto MPG data set that we've done before. We will train a neural network to predict so that we can run a prediction on it. We're just fitting it with 100 epochs. We're not doing early stopping or validation. We don't care. We just want to train the neural network, get a certain accuracy, save it, clear it out, load it, and see that we have the same accuracy from what we saved without having to retrain. So you'll see here that I train it and I print out my prediction, uh, or my uh, error, RMSE. And you can see that being printed down here from the last time I ran it. This is a not a particularly well-trained network for the car data set, but we just want to prove that we can reload it and get that same error rate, which we get here. It matches off to the last decimal place. So here is where we actually save it. And I save it in all three formats, just so that you can see what that looks like. I save it there to JSON. All of these are basically um, using JSON file write, YAML file write, and then if you want to save the binary file form, you actually do model.save. OS path join. So we're going to put it into the, um, into the path that we defined earlier. So it will go into 
Actually, I wanted it to use save path, so it goes into the DNN directory, which means deep neural networks that I'm saving. So let's go ahead and run this. Takes it a moment to train and load everything. Oh, I needed to run the prerequisite code at the very, very beginning. Yeah, helpful functions. Always make sure you run those first. Okay, now this should work. Okay, got a slightly better root mean square error, so we've saved it. If I go over to a terminal window, so this is the class information. If I go into the DNN directory that I'm saving these into, there's a number of other files in here because I've saved different neural networks from other, from other class sessions. But if we want to look at, say, the YAML one, So I'll open up the YAML one. Oh, I don't have the I installed in, on this Docker image. Very minimal. There you can see some of the YAML that is, um, that is making that up. That looks pretty similar to what I showed you on Wikipedia. If you look at the JSON, if you're familiar with JSON, it's used a lot in web services and, and JavaScript. So if I, um, if I look at that, they don't have any white space line breaking going on in there, but that, that is JSON. That's a JSON representation of that neural network. If I try to look at the binary one, it won't look so well. Actually, it doesn't even seem to be able to um, display that. So. But trust me, it is, it is binary data. If we look at these with lengths, we'll see that the, uh, the, the H5 one is definitely the largest of the, of the network. Ignore chatbot, that's something else for a later class session. But it's, it is larger than the other ones because it is storing the, the actual weights. If we go back to the neural network the code that we have here, we can see how to load it. We get the load model um, function for that. We can run this, get a result. Okay, that one was not as, as good, but like I said, it's not very tuned and it's not doing early stopping. We're saving it to the save path. We're also saving this one to the save path. And if we run it and load it from the save path, we're loading model from the save path, we get exactly the same result on both of these. That's showing that we were able to reload it. We're using a different, we're using model two here. So that shows us that it is a different, a different one than the one that we had saved. So that is saving and loading neural networks, something that is very important, something that you should definitely make use of when you're training more complex neural networks so that you can keep a copy of them and not have to retrain every single time. And this is the end of module three.